And joining us now here on Music Makers from his attic, Eric Baker. Eric, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you having me, man. Hey, this is great to uh, have you on the show. I know you've been on before talking about some other projects, but I love that we get to talk about your music today and just kind of uh, how music is formed and kind of your experience from being a music writer. Yeah, man. Let's do it. Hey, uh, first thing I want to talk about is uh, really with your style, something I've noticed, and because I know some a bit about your background, I guess it tell us a bit about how you got started uh, in music and kind of what made that transition because you weren't always going to be, be a musician, right? Right. Yeah, I, I started really late. Um, I, I didn't pick up the guitar until I graduated college. And I graduated from the University of Tennessee. My degree is in mass communications, um, public relations. Actually, I started out, I wanted to be on TV and do uh, sports broadcasting. That's what I, <laughs> when I, when I, as a freshman in college, that's what I, I, I wanted to be on ESPN. Um, so, you know, I, I picked up the guitar at first, just, um, I mean, it, it, it was, I, I've always been a fan of music. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, and I graduated and I had a lot of time on my hands and I'd actually bought a guitar when I was a sophomore in college and I'd never learned how to play it. So I just kind of started picking around on it. And I started out by learning the songs that I was listening to at the time and the songs that I love, the music that I love and the music that, that moved me and uh, kind of discovered this um, hidden talent, you know, where it was, yeah. it was like, huh, you know, I totally don't, I don't, completely suck you know this is something um but you know but it wasn't like immediately where I was like oh you know this is what I'm gonna do with the rest of my life um because a couple of years after picking up the guitar and and um playing at house party you know just playing a song at a house party and you know playing on my uh front porch or whatever um, that that led eventually to playing down on Cumberland Avenue and yeah. and playing cover music, um, which that built. You know, I started that as Matt and Eric, um, me and a guy named Matt Brewster, who still lives here in town. Mm -hmm. And we were playing like five nights a week uh, and, and playing college bars. But it, it, even at that point, it was still, um, you know, we were just having fun and meeting girls and um you know i mean it wasn't what i was going to do with with the rest of my life i actually um then went into graduate school i was going to teach english that was kind of the next phase of what i was going to do with my life and that was when um you know i started piddling with with writing songs and uh playing a few open mics playing original music and uh, and then I was at the right place at the right time and got an opportunity to open up for John Legend at the Tennessee Theater. Yeah, yeah. And that that was kind of the, you know, when people ask me when the light bulb moment of, you know, when did, you know, when did you know this was going to be something that you were, you know, going to pursue that that show, um, which was um, it was in May of 2007. Mm -hmm. is when when that was so you know five or six years of playing bars and learning how to play and all of that um led to that that opportunity in that moment and uh you know still if you told me then that i was going to make a career in music i i wouldn't have have really believed it but it was that show and that opportunity that um, I, I at least said, hey, I'm going to make a, a, a record. I'm going to record some songs, um, if nothing else, just to say that I did. And uh, it's just kind of been a steady, you know, slow moving snowball that has has built and built. And I mean, now for over a decade, um, I've been I've been playing full time. I mean, music is has is my life. I mean, it is it's pretty crazy. So going back to that moment, uh, opening for John Legend, uh, I know I've read where you said, you know, the, the guy that went on that stage is not the guy that kind of that came off that stage. I guess, can you talk to us a little bit more about about what you remember from that experience, having you know that kind of audience in, in front of you and just what that was like uh, just on a human level? Oh, man. Well, I mean, first and foremost, I was scared out of my mind. You know, yeah. I was I I. I distinctly remember, and it's a story that I love to tell, um, 
you know, just walking in to the backstage area of the Tennessee Theater. I'd never been back there. I'd been always been in the seats, right? I've always been the fan of music. And I kind of walked back there and I was feeling like, man, you know, wh what am I, how did I get here? And, you know, almost do I belong here? You know, that kind yeah. of, that battle of, am I good enough to be here? And, and I was just nervous. Um, but the first person that I ran into was John Legend. Uh, and it was me and my, my wife. She was my then girlfriend, um, Mandy. And uh, he was like, hey, oh, hey, are you the opener? And um, I'm like, yeah, you know, hey, I'm Eric and hey, I'm John, you know, and we met. And uh, he was like, yeah, I think your dressing room's down there and that's going to be a great night. You know, thank and he was thanking me. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, just that interaction to where, you know, he made me feel welcome. It, it validated me. And, um, you know, I was still nervous, of course, uh, when my time to play came you know and i walked up on stage and i was only i played six songs um and in around 30 minutes and uh you know what you what you mentioned and what i have said in the past is the guy that walked on that stage was not the same guy that walked off because you know it was a sold out show so you know mm -hmm. 1500 people which was by far the biggest crowd that i played to and um you know, there was just so many, how's this going to, you know, are these people going to like me? Are they going to listen? Because at that point I was playing bars, you know, where really most people, you know, it was my, my goal for the night was to sing louder than the, the crowd, really, you know. <laughs> and, um, and about halfway through the first song, it was just like a, a blanket had been thrown over the audience in terms of like the, the volume of it. You know, it was just like somebody there was a volume knob on the audience and it just went to, to nothing. And, um, and they listened, you know, and, and, you know, it, it was, it was disarming in a way because I was used to not people, you know, I was used to people not listening. Um, mm -hmm. but man, it just, um, after the show, I didn't have a record or anything. I just had my name, uh, in my MySpace page on a piece of, paper my Mandy and I had cut these little pieces of paper and we handed them out and and just the response from people uh and the again the validation of hey you know I'm not a uh I I, I can do this you know yeah. because at that point it was like man you know I'm this is kind of a hot it's a hobby you know and I, I'm really I'm meant to do something else I, and um that was certainly the 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 big moment that was like you know there's something here yeah um, and, and definitely you know thankfully i i listened um and, and kind of followed that opportunity and kind of walked through that door um because it has led me ultimately to what i feel like kind of my purpose you know what i'm meant to do you know is write songs right, right. And so. so something I find really interesting about kind of the, that t that time period of what you had going on, you were also a front man for uh, for a band down from up that was you yes know, it had, it had a lot of buzz. I mean, it was around the same time Ten Year was out and kind of yeah, I think you guys were all playing playing the smaller clubs stuff like that. We but, work, but, yeah. yeah. Kind of going back and watching some of uh, our, it's on YouTube if you're aware or not some live performances of you playing with Down from Up, and yeah. and. I guess talk a little bit about like what you took from those experiences and then after you kind of left from that to be Eric Baker, because from watching it, I still see a lot of you. It's completely different genre of music and, and not there. Like I played some for, for my wife the other night. She went, who's that? I went, you know who it is. Like it's Eric Baker. Like, no, it's not. <laughs> well, <laughs> she she yeah. like wanted to argue with me about it. <laughs> yeah. You know, for uh, it, when I when we first started, like when when as Matt and Eric, it was all acoustic, um, you know, it was Dave Matthews and Counting Crows and um, Ben Harper. And it was that kind of stuff that we started out playing. So mm -hmm. so really, you know, when we started, it, it was more like the Eric Baker kind of sound, you know, acoustic singer songwriter type type stuff. And then uh, it was Matt Brewster, and we did that for you know several years, just Matt and I. And then a, an amazing guitar player, uh, guitar player named Andy Wood. Yeah. Um, he joined us uh, a couple years into it, and so we started playing as a trio. Um, and still, it was you know acoustic cover type stuff. Well, then um, that 
it, it just kind of started, uh, you know, changing and evolving. Um, and we had a rotation of, of bass players and drummers and, uh, you know, certainly the music that Andy was listening to was, was, uh, you know, not the sentimental singer songwriter type <laughs> stuff. It was, you know, it was harder rock and yeah. it was like dream theater, um, type stuff. But what, what was super cool is, is, you know, I was still writing the songs and I was writing, um, still sentimental singer songwriter stuff, but just singing it over, you know, heavy rock really, which to me was a, was a really great pairing. Um, but you know, I, I feel like when I look back on that, I look at the pictures and watch the videos. I definitely lost, I lost myself, um, you know, a little, a little in it. And, and, um, I think in life, you know, oftentimes we're, we're kind of walking in circles at times when we're, you know, we're moving forward, moving backwards. Sometimes we're just walking in circles mm -hmm. and it just took me a while to walk back around to where I started. And, yeah. um, you know, and that's kind of what the down from up, all of that still is growth and, uh, Sorry, I just gotta let me let me plug my phone. Let me plug my phone in here. Um, I look at um, all of that time. You know, it's the ten thousand hours is what I what I always kind of go back to that Malcolm the Malcolm Gladwell um, idea of like you know that that greatness and not that I'm not that I'm saying that I'm great or oh, whatever, yeah. but like that it takes practice. It takes time to develop, and um, you know it's it's. Some people, I guess, are born with it, and um, you know that's a very small percentage. Most people have to have to put in the time, and um, that's that's what that whole Matt Nair down from up time for me was was just um, you know developing and and trying. You know, often in in the roads, it's like relationships or anything else. It's often going down the wrong roads um, that that show you you know more who you are and i think during that time i just was trying to figure out who i was and kind of what kind of footprint i wanted to make um you know in the in the music world i guess so yeah i mean i, I think it's safe to say when, when you're in your 20s and you know trying to do all that stuff you don't have life figured out yet and yeah so yeah you've got to go down yeah. the past to, to make you who you are now the good and the bad yeah totally and I yeah. mean, definitely singing that way, you know, the um, the way that I sing is very, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a hard singer. Yeah. Um, I sing, I sing. And um, so I, you know, singing all the, the, the rock songs and the, you know, singing over loud guitars and everything definitely uh, has helped develop the, the way that I sing, you know. And so now uh, I probably can sing a little softer when I'm just clicking on the guitar. I'm still singing like there's you know, a, a big Marshall stack behind me. Sometimes. Yeah. You know, but that brings up some stuff that I did want to talk about kind of from, from your style then even to now that, that I didn't know if a few of these things were like purposeful or they just worked out that way. But like the clarity of how you sing, I think is very distinctive to you and your style. Like even whenever you have the down from up stuff to, you know, all of your music, you're really easy to understand compared to like a Dave Matthews. You're like, he just mumbles along. You know, yeah. with his own stuff but was that purposeful in your singing or did that just kind of happen i think i just had i think it's the way like even my speaking voice you know I, i'll go out all right you know when i used to go out places uh you know people would be like man i didn't see you at the bar but i could hear you i could hear your voice or i could um and i think that uh you know people have stopped me like at the grocery store and they were like i knew that was you i i heard you you talking the next aisle over and and I just wanted to come say hello, you know, I could just, so I think that just, you know, the way that, uh, I mean, the way that I talk and everything is, it comes out in the way that I, that I sing. So. Yeah. Um, Which I think, I think is a lot that makes you your style. Cause I, you know, I, I believe that's a goal of every musician. It, it's not to sound like somebody, yep. it's to sound like you. And yep. that kind of gives you that. And the other big thing that, that I think is carried, carried along as well too, is you are a full body performer is yeah. you know you know when even if it's you playing guitar in your attic you know and watching some of the attic performances man i think uh, i don't know if you know the difference if you're playing in front of a webcam or playing in front of a couple thousand i think it's the same 
body of experience that, that, that you throw out. Yeah, man. Well, that's, uh, I mean, for me, the, like the fuel for my music is passion, emotion, um, because I taught myself how to play, uh, and you know, now I have voice lessons or anything like that. Like I don't have necessarily the technical side, um, to fuel my songwriting and to fuel my performance and all of that. So for me, it's all heart. Um, and, and that starts at my tippy toes and comes all the way up, you know, to the, the tips of my hair, really. Um, and it is, it's a full, um, it's, it's a full thing. I mean, after shows, even, you know, in the, these attic shows where I'll just be drenched after, you know, I'm just sitting and playing, but it just, it's, uh, it's, a uh, no workout that I do is, <laughs> is a as enjoyable, but also, you know, I'll, I'll be sore. Like my, my quads, my legs after a show will be sore. Um, I, I, I love to get into it. But I mean, part of that, too, is it's it's like anything. If if I'm into it, hopefully, hopefully you're into it as well. You know, I, I think that's it, if, if I can't feel it, then how can I expect you to feel it as a listener is, is uh, part of that, too. So that makes perfect sense. Hey, yeah. so t t talk to us a little bit about because I mean, the other thing I really appreciate about your music and you is you have found ways to be extremely vulnerable in, in your music writing. And talk to us a little bit about how has it always been that way? Did you find ways to kind of knock down some walls to work through things, you know, through writing music or kind of how has that evolved over the past 10 years of the subjects you write about and just kind of putting yourself out into the world to, to listen to? You know, that, that is, thank you for saying that, um, because that, uh, that is something that I have had to work on. I mean, certainly when I, when I started writing, um, a, I was, I wrote my first song when I was 23, um, 23 years old. And at 23, you just haven't, I mean, some people have lived many lifetimes at 23, you know, but I mean, for me, where I was as a 23 year old, um, I just hadn't really experienced a whole lot. I hadn't seen a lot. I hadn't been through a lot. And, um, and, and so when I started writing, uh, you know, the first songs that I wrote were like personal type songs. Um, but then also I was just kind of trying to insert myself into other situations um, and, and, and kind of try and try and empathize with, with a, with a experience that maybe I hadn't gone through, but, you know, quickly, um, you know, as I crossed over my mid twenties going into my later twenties, I, you know, for better or worse, had experienced, um, pain, you know, some pain and, you know, lost relationships and, you know, just loss in life and, and also, you know, the, the joys to balance that out as well. And, um, you know, writing personally, again, it's kind of that you hear it all the time, write what you know, talk, you know, yeah. write what you know, write what you know. And, um, I mean, that's, that's really, from that point on, you know, I, I mean, that was kind of was was the approach, you know, for me was writing, writing what I know. Um, so that that personal and that's that's now now that, you know, it was a lot easier when, you know, I think back when 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 I didn't have fans um, and, and when people weren't really listening that, you know, sitting in your room and that vulnerability um, was was easier to tap into because I, you know, it's like, well, no one's going to hear this, you know, so I can be as honest as I want to be. Yeah. And so as I was as I was kind of building my song catalog and, and starting out writing, um, you know, I was brutally honest at times, you know, and um, and and, you know, thankfully I was because now as I've gotten older and and gotten more people listening, I have to to use that as a watermark. And and kind of remind myself to 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 remain honest, and um, you know, and, and to be and that vulnerability, you know. Um, sure. So so it's still a um, and I mean I'm at a point now where there's there's so much music out there, and when I think about hey, what kind of song do I want to write, and what kind of song do I want to play, 
it, it has to mean something to me. And, uh, you know, over the last decade, uh, which has kind of, you know, been the, I mean, that's been the, the, the time that I've been touring and all of that. I've given thanks many, many times that I've written songs that mean something to me because there's a lot of nights where I've been I, I, in Toledo, Ohio. I think about, you know, I, I'm eating a ham sandwich out of the back seat of uh, my Honda Civic and it's cold outside and I'm playing a, a, a club in the middle of nowhere and nobody shows up and, you know, I'm miles, you know, hundreds of miles away from home. And, but yet I'm saying those songs the same way, you know, it was 10 people probably in the crowd and whether it had been a thousand and 10, uh, because the songs mean something to me. And, and um, so that, that personal aspect uh now is certainly a guiding light for my songwriting for sure so yeah. but it's taken me just to fully answer your, it's it's t took me a while to to realize that and i mean really in my i'm i'm going on a little long i sure. guess on this but i i distinctly remember i was playing um you know open mic nights and all of that and as things started to build for for eric baker i was playing the world grotto on market square and I can remember kind of the first few gigs that I played, very small audiences. I would just get up there and I'd play like 20 song sets and I wouldn't really talk that much. It was really, I was pretty serious. I was kind of taking myself a little too seriously, um, but it was like, oh, this is all about the music, all about the music because I'd played bars for so long and everything. But as soon as I started talking about even in between songs and telling people what the songs were about and some of the inspiration behind the songs and, and tying in uh, where it wasn't just the music and wasn't just the performance and the guy on the stage. It was like, wow, there's this whole backstory and there's, um, there's more to this guy than just, you know, him trying to, to, uh, you know, meet a, meet a pretty girl by playing on the guitar or whatever, you know, he's, he has, he's experienced something and, and this song represents something that he's gone through. And man, that sounds a lot like something I've gone through, you know, and that's where that yeah. whole, that's, that's where, um, you know, the, the, the story of music and that connective tissue between a song and the listener. Um, I mean, that, that to me uh, is, is all personal, you know, I mean, that's, that's the thing. And I mean, the other, just to keep talking, I guess, the other thing is, you know, now that some of my songs have had success and, you know, success through me being um, vulnerable and, and writing about my personal experiences, uh, it's also like, well, how do I not say the same thing over and over too? Oh, right. it, it, it's part of my, you know, now, like on this, on the last record, um, that I released earlier this year, Morning Light, um, you know, a lot of those themes, it's the same stuff that I've been writing about uh, for 10 years. But uh, one of the goals of that record was, well, how do I say, how do I say it in a different way? Or how does, you know, how can I, um, you know, continue writing what I know, but it, it not sound like the same old thing? Mm -hmm. um, which, which I feel like we really accomplished. Um, and that's where, uh, I've been really, really lucky throughout all of my career to have, to have had friends and had, you know, musical, uh, partners who have made me way better than I, than I really am. And, and, and kind of help pull out those, those good parts and, and say, you know, those, you know, kind of keep me to task on, on remaining vulnerable and remaining honest. And um, yeah, all of that. Yeah, cause that, long, was really... that was a long, that was the longest <laughs> answer. <laughs> it's like, all right, here, let's wrap this up, wrap this up. <laughs> no, but I think you really hit on, on a, uh, something really important that uh, I think fans of yours really do connect with. And it's great that you're aware of that as well too. Cause I, I yeah, I, as a fan, whenever you listen to the music, and I think a lot of the connection that, that I have with it, my wife has with it, is that it's it's bigger than a song because we, where we do, where you've been able to tell the stories in between them and, and share life experiences, things like that, that 
it, you know, the song is bigger than the song because that's the guy that's spilling his guts and connecting with you. And then you're right. Then it mirrors off of yourself. I, I, the question I have always wanted to ask you is the, the, the song, uh, 1200 days. Yes. And, and knowing what that, and, and get, tell us a little bit about, you know, so no one's heard before, like what that song is and what that means. And then I will ask my follow up. Okay. So 1200 days is actually the song that I played when I proposed to my wife, Mandy. And um, we'd been dating for approximately uh, 1,200 days. And so, um, I'm sorry, my puppy dog is right here. I don't know. Oh, he's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sonny, you want to say hello real quick? Say hello. Can you say hello? All right. Thank you, baby. Thanks, okay. You got to lay down. You got to lay down. I'll start, I'll start over on 1,200 okay. days. You got to lay down. You got to lay down. Okay. Come here. All right. You got to lay down. Stay. Good girl. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So 1200 days. Um, that is actually the song that, uh, that I wrote and played for my wife, Mandy, when, when I proposed to her. Mm -hmm. And, uh, at the time that I played it for her, we'd been dating for, for 1200 days. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, basically that's, I mean, that's, I mean, yeah. that's what the song is. Uh, it, it, it's a beautiful song. There's a lot to it. So like really, how do you keep it together to sing that song for a crowd of people, especially whenever she's in the crowd? Because I'm sitting there a mess. You know, half the crowd is because, again, they put that connection together of, you know, it's a beautiful song, one. But then there's this bigger thing in the room that everybody's aware of. And and just it's such an emotion beyond an emotional connection to, to a song where it's it's this bigger thing. How do you keep yeah. it together? Oftentimes I don't, you know, I mean, I cried, I mean, I cry a lot during my shows and uh, because again, the songs mean something to me. So, I mean, that song um, being such a big part of my life, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. not just my, um, not just my marriage and, and, but it's also now one of the most popular tunes uh, that I have. So it's just been a blessing in so many ways. So um you know, depending on if I'm in Toledo, Ohio, for instance, you know, some there's a lot of times when 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 that song is going to be the closest that I can get to my wife that night, mm -hmm. you know, just through that song. So, I mean, there's times when it just is overwhelming. Um, and, and certainly while writing the songs, it is an emotional uh, I mean, a lot of tears go <laughs> into the songs. Yeah. And um, so. You know, that's that's part of with going back to that vulnerability where I if I'm overwhelmed, I just let it happen. You know, I don't I don't try and um, hold back on on tears and 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 um, I just let it let it out. I mean, because that's mm -hmm. that's part of it. that's part of. It. Yeah. So, so what was the uh, I guess talk to us too a little bit about the process you know, with that song 1200 days. like. Did you automatically think, yeah, I'm going to put this on a record? Or did you shelf it and somebody have to talk you into it? Or like, how, what was the life yeah, of that was, song of how it got out into past that personal thing for you? Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it wasn't one that I was going to record. Um, it was, you know, again, it was just so personal. Um, and, uh, you know, it was one of those songs where I felt like it's, it's mine and Mandy's, mm -hmm. which as I say that now, I realized how selfish that, that, is in a way, you know, but, but it was, um, you know, there are some things that I have to save just for my wife, you know, and, uh -huh. um, but, uh, you know, it's 2000 and, um, I should know 2008, I guess is when I, I should know that right. On the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were, we were married in 2008. So uh, 2007 is when um, is when I played it for, and and so and then it ended up on Dear Amanda, uh, that album which I released in 2016, I believe. So you know, almost 10 years went by with it, you know, literally being, you know, I had the printed out the lyrics for Mandy um, for a, for a gift a long time ago, and so they in our living room they are they're sitting on the shelf. And that's literally, I mean, you said, was it just on the shelf? I mean, literally for 10 years almost, um, that song was um, on the shelf. 
And as I was getting ready for Dear Amanda, um, you know, that that whole record is a very personal record. And yeah. and um, it it, it immediately I mean, it, there was no question going into that record that that song was going to to be on there. Um, and really, it was just a matter of me telling myself um, just because uh, everything, you know, my wife and I went through some struggles and yeah. and made it through stronger than ever. And um, it just felt like a great full circle moment to be able to put that song on there. So, so on your new album, uh, Morning Light, you know, released yes. this year, uh, you've got a lot of diversity on that album. And there, there's there's a song that I've heard you play several different times in several different ways that I wanted to ask you about. Is okay. The, uh, hold on, let me find it in my notes. Uh, yeah, I, I, all We Need. Yes. And I've heard you play it with a band. I've heard you play it just there in your attic. I've heard you play it in a wine cellar. And I'll say that song is the words are the same, the music is the same, but it's different every time. And I guess talk to us a little bit about the the, the different. I'll call it the different Eric Bakers, the, the the Eric Baker with the band, the Eric Baker with you know with a guitar, and how your songs kind of mold into into those different kind of feels. Um, so I, you know, for me, a song starts with an acoustic guitar and a stool in a room. And if the song, and I tell songwriters this all the time, if the song isn't good there, you, you know, adding a bunch of crap to it uh, and guitars and you know, isn't necessarily going to make it better. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's um, you know, when you boil any song down, even big pop tunes and, you know, that you hear on the radio, when you boil them down um, to those stripped down to the core of the of the song, it's still should be good and um and so that's the the cornerstone of every eric baker song begins with with just the uh guitar and the and the and and me singing you know and then and then we build around that so um you know the fun part of that for me is to then you know go to somebody like will carter uh who he produced um, morning light uh, and he you know has toured with me for years and you know to play all we need we'll just take that song for instance yeah. you know when I when I played that for him it was just me and a guitar and then he he writes um, bound out about the fountain about out about the fountain you know he writes that that hook that guitar hook and and then you know, then it starts building from there and it and it brings it makes it more accessible at times to add the more stuff on it, you know, makes it more fun. And it goes back also to what I was saying. To me, it's all we need is saying what I've said many times before in other songs. But the way that that song ended up on the record with the full band, yeah. uh, it it felt fresh and felt like something new. Um, and, and it really, you know, for me, in terms of like the footprint of my music, it, it was something new and it was something, um, that, you know, it was more feel good. And, um, and, uh, so that's, but then, you know, there's been a lot of times like the, when I played all we need in the wine cellar and it's more introspective and, 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 yeah. a, a, you know, has a little, it has more depth to it. Uh, and, you know, I think that it's like, a like a poem or, or, you know, even a book, you know, sometimes you, I mean, anything that you, you read for the second time, a movie, you know, you watch for the second and third time, you pull new things out of it. You, you, you know, you know, maybe some time has passed. So it, it grabs you in a different way. Um, so I really enjoy playing with that in terms of the show performances and the recordings uh, you know, just trying to, to, to figure out, I guess, um, you know, just to, to stretch a song, uh, uh yeah. you know, and to, to, um, I can't think of what I'm trying to say, you know, I mean, to, I mean, stretch it, I guess is, you yeah. know, it's like, um, it, I, I, it's, it, it's, it kind of has like a natural, like it, it evolves to be the thing it needs to be at the time it's being. Right. Well, and that's yeah. the whole thing is, I mean, the way that 
the way that you write it in your room or the way that you record it isn't necessary. It's not set in stone. That's mm -hmm. the beauty of of writing music. You know, songs are always evolving and um, are really, in my opinion, never fully uh, done. Um, you know, you can always kind of be they can always be better, I think, you know, okay. uh, so so all we need, depending on just using, again, that song as a as a as an example. I mean, I feel like depending on how you're feeling, those different renditions of it can can mean something a little different, which is which is pretty cool to have that much, I guess, flexibility almost within one song. And not all songs yeah. are that flexible, though. And it right, goes right. back to, you know, where, you know, it's like, I mean, there's been a lot of songs where I'm like, man, I've played it this one way um, for for years and years. And I want to do something different. You know, I want to I want to let's try and add, you know, a band to it or whatever. Right. And sometimes it just by adding more stuff on it, sometimes it it makes it less. It makes the impact less. Um, sure. So. Uh, not every song is that flexible. Yeah, but, but you bring up a good question. I've always wanted to ask a recording artist that, that's got you know a, a good bit of a catalog. And I mean, with your career going, you know, recording wise over ten years, have you ever been tempted to re-record like a song, like a, some songs off your EP, like your first thing you ever released? Have you ever been tempted to, you know, re-record, re-release, throw that on something new, and just in that of all the sense, a song is kind of never done. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that, you know, when I listen back to that first EP, I've grown, you know, that I released that in 2008. So in 12 years, I've grown so much. And, and certainly I would record them a little differently, you know, but as I listen to them, it's, that is where I was. That is, it is a watermark in time. And, um, so uh, I also don't want to to mess with that either yeah. because um, cause that's just, I mean, that's where I was. And I can listen to those songs and I can remember the sessions and I can remember what, what went into them. And, uh, you know, I, it, it, it's special the way that it is, but certainly like Stay A While. Um, that's one of my songs that's on that yeah. first EP. Uh, for these last over the last year or so playing it with a full band um, we've come up with an arrangement of it that is is it, 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 I mean it's so much bigger to me and like the impact of it, it feels like a different song even though it's the same song it's like oh man I've never heard it this way um, so you know to answer your question that may be something um, that you know, when those opportunities come along, when a song just takes on a whole new life uh, by either adding a band or by taking the band away, it's like, man, you know, re-recording that um, is something that that I may be doing in the future for sure. Okay. Cool. But but I would never like take that. Like a lot of people take their old records down, um, you know, take them off of uh, you know Spotify and all of that. And for me. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's part uh, of it. yeah, it is. It's part yeah. of the journey. The, 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 part of, evolution. You know, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And I mean, hopefully I listen, hopefully I can listen to those songs from 2008 and see my growth. You know, I mean, yeah. if I listen to those songs and be like, dang, you know, I've really, I've really gone down the, down the tube since 2008. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, that would be, that's, you know, it, it's good to be able to, to look back. I mean, you know, to see where you've been is what shows you, help show you where you're going i mean it's just yeah. i mean so it's my yeah. musical history so i also know you, you're like uh you've been playing a lot of shows there in your attic and uh you've done and you also enjoy playing covers i know you do a lot of that so uh, what's a song that you wish that you had wrote oh margaritaville <laughs> <laughs> And you give I would me be, one percent I, this, of this, it. This, this wouldn't be coffee. This would be I'd be on a beach somewhere going, yeah. La, da, 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 da. Um, <laughs> uh, I say that jokingly. Um, uh, my mom for years and years has been like, you need to write a song like Margaritaville. And I'm like, yeah, mom, I do. I need to write a song like Margaritaville. Well, hey, you wrote Moonshine. Uh, that's, yeah, that's right. Well, that, hey, that's man. Kind of exactly. That's it. That's it. 
I gotta, I gotta send that to uh, to old Jimmy Jimmy B and see if he'll uh, put that on his next record. Um, <laughs> a song, man, that's such a great question. Um, there's so many. Uh, boy, I'm the worst at like the top ten, you know, or the top. Oh, I know. The <laughs> list of top. There, there are. Uh, yeah, there's there's so many, man. Um, uh, the the um, that I wish I had written. And, and I mean, I will say, you know, when I, when I think about, you know, the songs on that list um, and what music has meant to me as a fan, mm -hmm. when I started writing songs as a songwriter, I never thought that the songs that I was writing would be songs that people would walk down the aisle to uh, at their weddings or it would be the first dance at their wedding or would be, you know, um, that one of my concerts would be a first date, um, you know, that would eventually lead to a marriage or, um, you know, all of these little, these milestone moments that, that my music has been for other people. Um, when I first, you know, I, cause I have those experiences too, through people like, you know, Ray LaMontagne and Ben Harper and, you know, all the people that have been influences for me. It is so humbling and inspiring and um, almost, you know, hard to believe that uh, that people look at my music, um, you know, the same way I look at, at yeah. Ray LaMontagne's. Or, hey, well, last question for you. To, uh, can you kind of frame us through, uh, as a songwriter, uh, what your goals are? kind of that now compared to whenever you first started kind of like you know your end goal is to be you know was it like you know playing in arenas compared to like you know do you have the same goals now have they evolved and changed or kind of where are you as a songwriter um i mean as a songwriter like i was writing yesterday and um and uh you know, unfortunately, through all this pandemic stuff and everything, I haven't actually written very much. But I just haven't felt uh, I haven't felt like writing. Um, and when I think about who I want to be, what my goals as a songwriter moving forward, it it just goes back to what we were talking about earlier and those those personal um, letters to life um, and and about life. I just feel like um, I need that, you know, that's what I get from other people's music, that that sense of belonging and that that sense of, hey, I'm not going through this by myself. And so, you know, moving forward, it's really a continu continuation of what what I've been fortunate enough to be able to do um, the last decade. I mean, it, it's my hope. Um, that, that, you know, starting right now is, is the beginning of, of the next 10 years. Um, and, and just, uh, I want to keep writing songs that, that mean something to me because inevitably, uh, and it's not about, you know, any one song meaning something to a million people. It's about meaning something to one other person. Um, you know, if it means something to me and I believe in it and I feel it, then it's going to mean something to somebody else. And, um, you know, I think that, that getting caught up and, and trying to build an audience and, and try and reach more people and, um, you know, that, that to me um, is not necessarily um, my goal. I mean, I definitely want to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, and I want to be able to keep doing it with the control that I have now and, um, and just with the same heart that I've been following, um, all along. So yeah. hey, I just want to kind of end this on a story. I've told you this before. You probably don't remember it, but the, and this is the best testimony I can give to why somebody should be an Eric Baker fan. Uh, when I'm trying to get him to like, Hey, check, check his music out. I met you, gosh, I don't even remember. It was it's uh, it was during Noc uh, Dancing with the Knoxville Stars, and yeah, uh, okay, and, yeah, me and a partner of mine were uh, supposed to go uh, videotape you rehearsing and doing some things for uh, for some promotional stuff, and yeah. we talked on the phone a little bit, scheduled some stuff out. Uh, we show up at the at the place where the rehearsals were going on. 
I see you from across the room. You come up, give me a big hug. We, you know, we, we talk and kind of go on. And the guy that was with me goes, oh, wow, how long have you known Eric? I went, just met him. Yeah. He, he, <laughs> <laughs> and the fact of, uh, and kind of get to this of, you made me a fan of you as being a good human being first before I ever heard your music. And I think oh. that's the biggest testimony I can give to you. Um, yeah. And just kind of goes in the theme of what we've been talking about, you know, uh, you know, through this interview of just being a good person, being honest with yourself, you know, being that open, you know, that open human being and the rest of it will kind of work itself out. So like you, you've always been, you've been great to me even whenever you didn't know me and thank you very much, you know, for doing this interview with us today as well. Oh man, that you, uh, thank you. Thank you for saying that. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I mean, it's just who I am, you know, and, uh, you know, certainly, uh, I appreciate this opportunity. Um, so, so much, uh, especially with everything that's going on and everything, just, uh, you know, to be able to still talk about music and um, and play music, it, it's a uh, it's a blessing for sure. Um, so thank you. Yeah, Eric Baker, thank you very much for joining us today here on Music Makers. We appreciate your time. Yeah, brother, thank you.